The first guy off my boat was, uh, stepped on a, a mine, trigger a mine, and, and was killed. You could hear the rifle, the machine gun fire, you know, the bullets were coming in. I knew war was hell and war had possibilities of being maimed and disabled. But once you're there and you experience a lot of things, then those possibilities become even more frightening and more scary. When you're out there 24 seven, the eye you could see is skies and blue water. And knowing that a submarine allowed to come up at any minute, and there's no good feeling. We lost our youth. We didn't have, we didn't have a chance to grow up as young kids or whatever, young people. And he came out, in fact, like one of our guys says, I'm gonna say, yesterday I was 19, today I feel 50. First thing I heard was an airplane going into a dive, and then I heard a terrific explosion. And I figured, oh, the poor guy, he didn't pull out of it, and he hit. Immediately after that, I heard another tremendous explosion. So I figured, well, maybe he hit the ammunition hanger. <laughs> Seconds after that, bullets came flying through the window and went right by me, and I knew that we were being attacked by the Japanese. favored by our lack of readiness, with the sky and sea all their own, at 7.55 a.m., hell broke loose. Man-made hell, made in Japan. I see everybody running out to the balcony. So we all ran out there, no clothes, nude. And we were saying, what the heck are they doing maneuvers on Sunday? And I said, not only that, but they're using live bullets. Look at the guys falling. I came flying out of the barracks and under a poker table right into one of our sergeants. And I looked down and said, what's going on? He says, I guess the war started. He said, let's go. Go where? We got to get to the bomb dump, our arsenal. We got to get some bombs out to the planes, chase these guys. And that's what we did. That's what I remember. I was wounded on December 7th. First, first pop, Japanese bombs that fell, I got caught. And my story is that if I had been wounded on that morning as a result of that Japanese bomb, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I would not be talking to you because all my buddies went on into the World War II and went down to the South Pacific and elsewhere. All, were, all, were, all, not, all did not return. The second phase of the attack began. Then everything quieted down and we're on our way out to the field to put some bombs in the planes when the second raid came in. And I got caught out on the field during the second raid. Of course, I, they missed me. You could really see the devastation. My brother-in-law was on, one of the ones that had it was on the ship that opened up the harbor that got the 
people out of there at the time of the bombing. So, um, you know, we had some background. We got to see quite a lot of it. It's amazing that they really got out of that. By 9.45, the attack was over. One hour and 50 minutes of perfidy. The last wave of the invaders was beaten off. Yes, beaten off by our men, who against overwhelming odds, heroically and magnificently gave notice to the world that we had only begun to fight. I was with a horse, in a horse outfit, the 3rd United States Cavalry Regiment, believe it or not, until 1942. Hitler was in control of Europe. He marched down the Champs de in June of 1940. And two years later, 1942, I am still training to go to war on a horse. I was assigned as a machine gunner because I was a big, robust guy. I was about 123, and I was about 5'2". So I qualified. The guy thought I was John Wayne, but I really wasn't. And there we took our, uh, our training. And Kansas was a very flat state. And, uh, you know, we learned full field packs, and we learned how to take a rifle apart in the dark and put it together again in the dark. I was going to become a radio gunner. And they shipped me off to school in Boxdale Field, Louisiana. I got on a train. I went to, uh, uh, I went to St. Louis and then down from St. Louis straight down to uh, Shreveport. And uh, I come in and they say, well, it's the middle of the session. We're going to be a couple of months. What do you want to do? What can you do in the meantime? I said, a hobby of mine is photography. So they made me the base photographer. 